As someone starts to step forward, Frank, in taking this journey, as they start to put their work out there, as you've put in your work out there, how do you deal with criticism? Oh, (laughs) that's a great question. Because if you are doing work that makes a difference, you will, not might, (laughs) not maybe, you will get criticized. You're going to catch it. The nail that stands above the others always gets hammered down by some people. But all criticism is not the same. And this is a key thing to understand. In fact, you can tattoo it under your eyelids. All criticism is not the same. Now, in my most recent book, 48 Laws of Spiritual Power, I explore three kinds of critics. They are the supporters, the objectors, and the trolls. And each critic is different and ought to be treated differently. Someone once said, don't take criticism from people you'd never go to for advice. Now, I largely agree with that. For me, the criticism that comes from supporters is priceless. These are people who are in your corner. They love what you do. Uh, They may say, hey, in this article or book, there's a typo or a misspelled word, or this article is really great, but it would be better if you used this example, or you cited this story, or you used this biblical text, or even if they say, hey, you missed something in this article, why don't you add this point? It would be even better. And I find that kind of criticism absolutely precious. But most of the kinds of criticism (laughs) that you will get, you would do best to ignore because it's not constructive. And unless a person is enrolled in the journey that you're on, there are people who read your work or listen to your work and they get the joke, so to speak. It's really not valuable to listen to their criticism in most cases. Now, I'll say something else too for the Christians who are listening. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, criticism will test your spiritual maturity. Watchman Nee said, nothing so tests the spirituality of a teacher as opposition to his teaching. So if you have produced high quality work and some people give it a bad review, As I mentioned earlier, if it's high quality work and it's really touched some people and ministered to others, the person that gives it a bad review, all it means, it means it wasn't for them. That's it. It wasn't for them. And so that's what I would say about criticism and people who are afraid of criticism. And this is typically the biggest stumbling block that creators have that prevents them from launching their work is the fear that they're going to get criticized. And you're going to have to dance with that fear and find a way to push through despite it, because you will never help anyone if you allow that fear to paralyze you. And really, Josh, in my view, it's a selfish act to succumb to such fear because you're depriving people of being helped by that which has helped you. So for example, and this is a this is a related point, most people who have been impacted by what you have said or written will never tell you. They will never tell you. This became very apparent to me. There was a a conference that I spoke in once, and there was a woman who attended. She was a young woman, and she gave me a card. It was a sealed card. And she said, because I'm meeting you in person, I wanted to give you this card. And she's not someone who uses email or uses Facebook messages. So this was her opportunity to tell me something. When I brought the card upstairs to uh, our room, my wife and I opened it up. We read it. And basically, she said, your book from eternity to here saved me from suicide. I was going to kill myself. All right. Now, here's my point. My point is this. I would have never known if I had never showed up to that conference and if she never attended. This was years after she read the book. Years. And so my point is, is that most people are not going to tell you if what you have done, right, has impacted them. The other thing I will say is that not only is not all criticism the same, but if your fear of criticism prevents you from putting out your work, you are being selfish because you're depriving people of what you have to offer. If I said, I'm not going to write from eternity to here, or maybe I've written most of it, but I'm not going to release it because I'm afraid of being criticized, That woman may not be alive today. So it's selfish to succumb to fear in putting out your work. That's amazing. You know, Frank, um, it's really powerful. And I think it's a call to responsibility 
for what are you carrying and what are you re- then you're responsible to release it. And for me, this this is what happened to me. I'm just going to inject my personal testimony in this. Um, back in 2016, um, I was spending some time with the Lord, just my morning time, and I felt the Lord speak to me very strongly that He was looking for an ROI in my life, a return on investment. And I said, okay, like, Lord, what's that mean? And I didn't have a platform. I didn't have any opportunities open to me, but I felt that I was from that moment to start preparing and putting preparation for the time when the opportunity shows up. And it was at that time I started writing and I just started journaling. I never actually, my story of writing a book never started out to say, Hey, I'm going to sit down and write a book. It turned into just journaling with the Lord and just seeing things in scripture and taking note. And over time, I realized that was a book that I was supposed to release, but I did start leading Bible studies. I was collecting my notes. I started putting things in order and curating my content because I understand that when preparation meets opportunity, it will put you into your destiny, but you must be prepared when the opportunity comes. And so I was preparing back then. And now I can see that's a responsibility the Lord laid on me. Start getting things ready. I've made an investment in you. I'm expecting a return on that. And I would say for all of our listeners, we all have investments that have been made into us by the Lord, but they come in different ways through relationships, through the knowledge, through the mentorship, through the coaching you receive, through the teaching you sat under. And then that forms you your unique message, your unique spiritual fingerprint that you're called to leave on the world. And I think that we need to have coaches and guides and mentors to help us push us forward to release those messages that we're carrying. And that's our responsibility. Yes, absolutely. That's well put, my brother. That's well put. Okay. So Frank, you have written over 30 books. I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I've read most of them. I've not, I think I've read all of them. So out of all the books you've written, which are your five favorites? I know that you have ones that you say this one's really important. I also know you're working on a new one right now because I can tell by the way you spoke through this interview, it's bleeding out a little bit. I know you got something upcoming. I'm wondering if you can just drop us a little bit of a hint of what's coming up next that you're working on. But I'll start first with the 30 books that you've written. What would be your top favorites? Yeah. Well, let me first say that it is a Himalayan task to write a book. So for myself, I write a book when I have no other choice, meaning I write a book if the idea is powerful enough and it warrants that it gets under people's skin and grabs them by the throat and makes a change. But when it comes to making an impact, there's nothing that compares to a book. There just isn't. So that's the reason why, you know, I'll be willing to, uh, put the blood, sweat, and tears into uh, producing a book. But readers and listeners can see my entire catalog at frankviola.org forward slash books, or they can go to frankviola.org and look at the menu and they can see all of the books. But my top favorite would be, and this is in no particular order, but it would be uh, God's Favorite Place on Earth. That book has been described as poetry in motion. And theologians and scholars have remarked to me at how fresh the message was. They had never seen the point being made in their reading of the Gospels in the New Testament. And I'm not going to give away the point, but (laughs) it's all about God's favorite place on earth and how that applies to us. But to my surprise, Josh, more grown men have cried through that book than anything else I have written. And that's based on so many emails I have received uh, from people who've read it. The next one would be From Eternity to Here. And one very famous author said it reads like a movie on paper, which I was really blessed by. It uncorks God's grand mission, his eternal purpose from Genesis to the genuine leather. So that's a very important book to me because the eternal purpose is the central message that runs throughout all of my work. The other one would be Insurgents, Reclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom. And to my mind, this is the book that's most needed for our time, at least from what I've written. And some regard it as my signature work. What it does, it explores the explosive gospel of the kingdom throughout the scriptures. There are six parts to it. They all work together. If one part doesn't strike a reader, I tell them, move on to the next part and come back later because they all do something differently. But I think that is the message for our time from my perspective. 48 Laws of Spiritual Power, at the time of this recording, this is my newest book. It's all about how God's power operates in a person's life, whether they're in ministry or not. Every Christian needs God's power. 
Every Christian has a ministry of some kind. This book explores what depletes God's power in our lives, in our ministries, and what increases it. And uh, the website for that is 48 Laws, not spelled out, but written as numbers, 48 laws.com and they can sample the book and they can also listen to interviews i've done on the content and then the last one would be jesus manifesto that is a cure for jdd jesus deficit disorder <laughs> uh, which is a virus that has afflicted most of the christian world today from my perspective and i have a co-author who wrote some of the chapters with me so those would be the top five those books are incredible frank i gotta tell you and i want to tell the audience too i've had I've had spiritual experiences reading your books where I've stopped, I've prayed, I've met with the Lord, just some powerful moments um, based on the themes that you write about, how you unpack them, and just how you use your gift in partnership with the Lord to bring these messages to us. Um, very powerful. I can't thank you enough for the work that you do, how it's personally impacted my life, and I know it will impact the listeners that choose to pick up any of the books you just mentioned, as well as the rest of your catalog. As we wrap this up, Frank, and we bring it in for a landing, um, what are your final words for the guys that are listening? I'll tell you, you know, we have a tribe of kingdom-driven men. These are guys that want to reach their full potential in life, regardless of where they are in the different sectors of society, whether they're in business and being a husband, being the best father they can be, and ultimately bringing the Lord and fulfilling his ultimate purpose in their life. If you could leave us with some parting words for just charging the men as they go forward from here, I would love to hear and give you the mic. Invest in reading and listening to people who are proclaiming the kingdom message. I think it's rarely preached today, and when it is, it basically is kind of diluted or watered down, or it just takes one aspect of the kingdom and ignores the other aspects. Josh, you're aware of this, but I have a podcast called The Insurgents Podcast, and it goes along with the book Insurgents Reclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom, but I have partners in all of the episodes, or virtually all of them, and they're different. One of them was Michael Heiser, who unfortunately passed away. But I have these these guests, and I'm not interviewing them. They're actually partnering with me, and we're talking about the kingdom of God together. And uh, right now, what we're doing is we're going through every single reference to the kingdom in the New Testament. And we're in the Gospels right now, and then we're going to go to Acts and epistles and all the way through revelation and we're riffing on every mention but i guess in terms of going beyond investing and in listening to people who are talking about the kingdom message find a mentor and the way to do that is if they have impacted you personally approach them you know ask them do you have any mentoring program do you do anything in the way of mentoring and reach out that's how i have found all the mentors that i've had in my life Mentors will collapse time for you <laughs> if they're good, and not all of them are, but if they're good, they'll spot things uh, that you won't see, and they could also prevent you from making some mistakes that you'll regret. So those are the two big things I would say. Invest in listening to and reading those who emphasize the kingdom message. And um, you and I mentioned T. Austin Sparks, and um, he was a great influence in my own life. And he really understood the kingdom, the kingdom message. He would be one person I would point to. But uh, check out the Insurgents podcast if you're interested in anything I have said in this podcast interview. And find yourself a mentor and just approach them. And don't be offended if they tell you that they're not able to do it. Don't take that personal. That's not a good sign <laughs> anyway. If you do something like that. So, yeah, and let the Lord lead you and guide you in that endeavor. Frank, that's really awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. And and I've gone, you know, I've, in my life, I've gone and, and approached people that I knew they had something that I needed and I went after them. And I took them out to lunch if they were local or I bought them something and I started that relationship to get into it. So I can't encourage that enough. I mean, we need fathers, we need mentors, we need coaching, and we need to be proactive. Sometimes we sit around and we just think the doorbell's gonna ring and someone's gonna show up and they're gonna be there to give me all the missing pieces that I've been looking for, but it doesn't work that way, does it? No, absolutely not. And I will add one other thing because it came into my mind as we were talking. If you're listening to this and you're a pastor or a teacher talking about the scriptures, God's word, and so forth, 
I have a mentoring mastermind, actually. It's both mentoring and it's mastermind called The Insurgents Experience. And it goes along with my book, Insurgents Reclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom. They're different tiers. We have some tiers for older pastors, leaders, and we have some tiers for younger, those who are in their 30s, for example, or early 40s. And if you're interested in this at all, just go to ministrymind.org. That's one word, ministry mind, all one word, mind, M-I-N-D, ministrymind.org. And you can read the testimonials. You can see what we do. What you want to do is apply. But anyway, I just say that because I don't know how many pastors, teachers, etc., are listening to this, but that is one resource you may be interested in. Frank, it's been awesome speaking with you today. Thank you so much for just sharing your wisdom. Hey guys, this is a postscript just before you head out and we part ways. I have created a bundle of free resources. This would include my other podcasts, the YouTube channel, several free eBooks, free seminars, and other free resources. And you can find all of that at frankviola.com. And if you go to frankvella.com, you will see in the top menu a link that says free stuff. You just click on that and you will be taken to the free resources page. Also, a number of you have asked if you could donate to help defray the costs of the podcasts and also to express appreciation for the value that you've been receiving. You're under no obligation to donate. I don't ask for donations, but should you have it on your heart to do so, you can go to frankviola.us. That's frankviola.us. And that will take you to a donate page. There's three different options you can use to donate, all of them simple. Thank you very much and God bless.